I guess, for thinking that it's going to be beneficial for the children. Um, so I kind of wanted to get kind of more clarity on that. My court appointed attorney is filing a 388 um, before the hearing on March 17th, but I never had it to where it's kind of like done, an emergency hearing is going to be done. thinking that it's going to be beneficial for the children. Um, so I kind of wanted to get kind of more clarity on that. My court appointed attorney is filing a 388 um, before the hearing on March 17th, but I never had it to where it's kind of like done, an emergency hearing is going to be done, but are they even able to file that due to us not even being seen yet for the, the, um, the termination going towards um, guardianship? Jennifer, what do you think? So the TPR is for a legal guardianship, not adoption? No, it's my, my mother-in-law has all four of my children right now. Three are with one father, um, and then one is with another father. Um, we just also how, found out that my other, they are 11, 11, six, two, and one and a half. Um, so okay. the, 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 the March hearing was supposed to be for my three younger kids, and then my 11-year-old was supposed to be um, the 18-month hearing, but they're fast-tracking it now because my daughter's father's ICP, because he's ICPC, because he's in Oregon, was just denied. So they're trying to, I guess, fast-track her as well, um, but yeah. Let me jump okay, in. so Let me if you have... Jennifer, hold on. Let me yeah, jump in for a second. Did you say an ICPC was denied of a of ICPC yes. of a father? Yes, um, my daughter's father has an outstanding warrant from South Lake Tahoe. Oh, um, he's li currently living in Oregon, and so they um, they just denied it. Um, and my daughter's actually going to Oregon next week to visit him. The social worker's taking her, but even though they already told my daughter and him and I that it was denied. You know, you might want so to mention, trying... you might want to mention to that father to talk to his attorney about whether ICPC even applies to fathers. But that's a whole other okay. issue. Uh, Jennifer, go ahead and you know answer the question. I was, I'm sorry for sure, that. sure. And as far as the ICPC, I had that same thought as as you did, Vincent. Um, generally, ICPCs do not apply to parents. Um, in the rare instance where they require uh, supervision in the in the ICPC state. Uh, social workers like to claim that it applies to them, but it really doesn't even apply to them. So I agree that uh, the father should ask his attorney to check into the basis for the denial uh, of, the, of the placement, really, it's a placement issue. Um, and regarding the TPR on 317, what to do about that? Um, mm -hmm. Or actually, I'm sorry, you're asking about what to do about the motion, the emergency motion for termination of, of visits or reduction of visits. That's a common move the department makes at the in this in the phase that's after service is ended and before termination of parental rights, and they do it arguing that reduction in visits is beneficial to the child. However, it significantly limits your opportunity to argue an exception to TPR, which is the parental relationship exception, which has just been substantially modified um, and is a much easier standard to meet. And because you do have an 11 year old and a six year old might apply, certainly any hearing they would have on this request needs to be vigorously defended and argued against. So. Uh, your attorney that's filing the JV-180 needs to also prepare for that hearing and object to it based upon uh, the grounds I just said. Uh, and you do need to get your own JV-180 on file that will show a change in circumstance from the time the termination of parental rights hearing was ordered um, that, would modify, that would warrant a modification. So hopefully 
you can finish up whatever services you were assigned to do and you know turn this around. There definitely is time. California case law allows for escape hatches um, even on the eve of TPR. So all is not lost, but you do need a competent attorney to really get in there and fight for you about this. Yeah, I my services were ceased, Dad, and one of the fathers and I services were ceased in December, but I actually completed all of my services. They just said that because of a psych eval um, that was done by some uh, county person that I don't have the capability of... Um, changing even though I can do this I can do services so I've been doing a lot of extra services like a secondary parenting class AOD stuff and then like of course going to visits and doing like other classes and classes with um, the county I'm in their FFA um, doing classes on like uh, childhood like identifying childhood trauma things like that so because they give you certificates for those um, and so with any of that stuff, would that be beneficial? And still seeing my therapist, would those be beneficial to submit on this hearing, um, the emergency hearing, as well as the TPR, or would a lot of those should be saved? Jennifer? I don't think that Jennifer heard that question. Uh, oh. But I think that- I did, I did hear that question. Oh. I'm so sorry, um, I was on mute. Um, so, well, for, first of all, at the TPR, return to a parent is not an option. That's why it's so important to get this JV-180 on file and to argue against the request to reduce the amount of visitation. Um, I heard what you said about the psych eval and what they said. Without knowing more about that situation, uh, my comments are you know, more general. Um, you mm -hmm. definitely need to get all of the information that has come out in the last few weeks before the court as soon as possible via the JV-180. That's imperative. And it sounds, from the, from the sounds of it, you know, this is not a, a done deal. This is something that could be pulled out. Okay, okay so the JV-180 should be filed. And I can always tell my attorney this on Monday to file that before the hearing on the 22nd, or that needs to be filed before the TPR hearing in March. It needs to be filed before the hearing in March. It needs to be filed as soon as possible, but only file it if you have a significant amount of new information, which it sounds that you do. And what you need, you need the certificates that, you know, from classes, you need letters from service providers, and you want to literally staple them to that JV-180 and get it all in front of the judge so the judge can see no matter what somebody might have said about what, what one person's opinion was about an ability to change. In fact, you have been doing services, and the presumption would be that successful completion. Three minutes, then. The requisite change. You know, okay. one. And one, then, one, oh, I had one more question. If the other parent, he still hasn't done any of his services and started them yet, we don't live together or anything, will that inhibit me if, say, I file the 180, submit all the paperwork, and it works, and they either, um, start reunification process for me again or give children back, you know, devil's advocate. Does that affect, um, if he doesn't do anything, does that affect me? Um, Cause that's what they filed the C services on was more on him, but they grouped us together. So um, is there a way that I could still get the children, even if the other parent, um, there's no hope for them? Uh, yes. Um, you know, um, it's kind of a loaded question. Uh, what is, I mean, if you have a continuing relationship with a parent who hasn't done what the department has ordered them or the court has ordered them to do in order to reunify, yes, that will have some bearing. If, as you say, that you don't have a relationship with him and you're not together, Two minutes. then no, it should not have a bearing on what you, on what the court rules. Okay. Did that make sense to you, Charlotte? Yes, it definitely did. Okay. There's one thing I wanted to jump in and say, because I've seen a lot of 388s denied for this very simple reason. In your declaration, in your 388, make sure that you state why this is best for the children. You know, sometimes we just assume, oh, everybody knows 
kids being returned back to their families or their parents is the best. Well, if that's true, put that in there. Tell the judge why that's best. The kids are crying for you. The kids get upset every time you end the visit. You know, there's such a, an emotional bond. I don't know if you uh, ask for a bonding study. You know, there's a whole issue about bonding studies. You know, if you want to talk about that, you can give me a call on Monday at 888 6582 There's a couple other strategies One minute. that you didn't ask about, but uh, I think that you should try. But you know what? In about four to six weeks, call us back. Let us know what has happened. Hey, Charlotte, we've come to the end of the show. I want to thank you for calling and thank you for listening. Jennifer Ani, CPS defense legal expert, thank you for joining me on today's show. And that is the end of the show today. And we'll see you next week on the radio. <laughs>